Hey there, let's talk about interplanting. This is a new growing technique for me on the farm this year and this is now my fourth growing season and interplanting is one of those things that I've always been fascinated by and intrigued by but haven't really ventured into experimenting with it. And so big disclaimer, as I just mentioned, this is my first season doing some interplanting so I am not an expert at it whatsoever and don't claim to know everything about it. I can just share with you what I'm doing now and what's working, what's not working and I'll keep you guys updated. I think one of the best things we can do about getting better about growing food is sharing what works and what doesn't work so we can learn from those mistakes. So what I wanna talk about today is what is interplanting, why you might wanna do it and some of the benefits. I'll talk about some of the interplants that I'm doing right now and also uh, this bed right here I just prepped out and I gotta plant that one out to an interplant. Let's start off by talking about what interplanting is and essentially it's planting more than one crop in one bed. <laughs> That's what we got here. A lot of people will refer to this sometimes as companion planting and I think generally, and I don't know the exact definition, I think it varies a lot, but a lot of times when I hear companion planting, I think about planting more than one crop in a bed or a species in a bed so that you know they can benefit from each other in some biological way like pest control or nutrient sharing and things like that. But for me, really interplanting is sort of the overarching idea of putting more than one crop in a bed. And so that's really what I'm going for here. And so why would you want to do this? Well, there's a couple of things. One is yield. And sometimes you can get more than one bed's worth of yield out of one bed, which is great. Another one is increasing diversity. And I've talked about this plenty of times before, but the main ideas about creating living soil is you want to keep the ground covered, you want to keep the ground planted, you want to disturb it as little as possible, and you want to increase diversity. So by bed to bed in my market garden and a lot of other market gardens that you might see is that we have different crops in each bed and so we don't have just like huge field blocks of the same crop and that creates diversity. But if we can create diversity in each bed, that also benefits the soil biology and soil health and the whole ecosystem here and we get really healthy crops. So really the big motivator for me is yield. I'm a huge fan of doing whatever I can to increase the soil health and the soil biology. And so the diversity helps a lot. But for me, one of the biggest motivators, as I said, is the yield. I have a very small farm. If you've been following along on the channel, you guys know that I have two 100 foot caterpillar tunnels. I have 16 50 foot beds. That's my entire farm. And you know, the biggest thing you can do to increase yield is to focus on soil health and soil biology, strong starts, strong transplants, good irrigation, good crop planting, healthy you know, plants, all that kind of stuff so that every square foot of your farm is really maxed out and you're getting the most yield. But when you get to a point where you're really getting more consistent with your production, if you can add in more crops in the same beds and get a little bit more yield, well, that's a pretty awesome situation. Also for me, because I have such a small farm, I can't offer a huge diversity of crops while still maintaining consistency with my customers. So for me, and for example, the green onions, like I don't know if I could dedicate a whole bed to green onions, but if I split a bed and get pretty much a full bed of green onions and a little bit of lettuce, well then I'm really getting like 150% production out of that one bed. And to me, then I have green onions and I can expand my offerings to my chefs and have a di more diverse offering and keep them happier. And also at the same time, increase my sales for each restaurant. So for me, yield is huge. This is another interplanted bed of green onions and lettuce. And this one I put in the ground just a few days ago <laughs> in comparison to the bed I just showed you that's much, much further along. And I wanna make a couple of points here about production and yield and stuff like that. And I think there's always a concern for when you start putting more than one crop in a bed that you might sacrifice the yield on both crops. And so for this example here with the green onions, when I don't inter plant green onions, I plant three rows. I used to plant them four inches apart in row, but now I'm using the gritter, so that's five inches apart in row. So basically, I'm planting the onions in this scenario exactly how I would plant them without the lettuce. But now, I sneak in two rows of lettuce, and I usually put four rows of lettuce in a bed, so I'm actually getting a half a bed of lettuce production out of what would normally be just empty space. So in this case, I really am getting 50% more yield in the same bed, which is fantastic. Now, another thing you can use interplanting for in your advantage is to control your production. So if you plant a full bed of green onions, and that will yield you a lot of green onions if you've ever grown them before, that might be too much for your customers by the time they grow and get too big, or whatever and so you can control your output so right now I have three rows and let's say I really only needed a half a bed's worth 
Well, one thing you could do is just break the bed in half, which I don't like to do, but you could also reduce the number of rows. So for me, I'm doing three rows of lettuce, uh, three rows of green onions here, but let's say I needed less green onions in that same succession. We'll plant two rows of green onions and plant three rows of lettuce. For me, I need a lot of lettuce, so getting extra row lettuce is super cool. So again, you can control your output on each crop and not have to sacrifice, uh, you know, splitting beds and things like that. So huge addition to control the output from each crop. I know I've been talking a lot about that green onion lettuce combo, but that's the one I've been doing the most and it's because I use those crops a lot. I think traditionally a lot of the interplanting that you'll see will be with taller crops like peppers, cucumbers, tomatoes, because they start, when you put them in the ground, they're really small and they take a while to get big. And so there's all this room on the side of your beds to put in other crops. So this one you guys can see here, this is uh, the Italian sweet peppers, which I love growing. And on the sides I have beets. And so before they get big, there's all the space on the side that won't get shaded out. You can get another small crop in there. So, you know, a lot of people do like, you'll direct seed radishes or maybe a quick growing brassica, like, you know, arugula or something like that. You can get a, uh, you know, another two rows in here, in and out before the crop sort of takes over the bed and shades it out. So that's what we got going on here. This is peppers and beets. Uh, you could probably also do this with cucumbers and tomatoes. I've seen a lot of people will interplant uh, tomatoes and, and basil. Uh, there's so many different combinations out there and I'm gonna be starting at another, another bed today with a different interplant and I'll show you guys that in a minute. But I just wanna talk about, you know, with these taller crops are a great opportunity to get stuff in and out. And especially if you're in, let's say a greenhouse and it's heated and you wanna get early tomatoes, for example, well, you can get another half a bed's worth of crops out of there for no additional heating costs. And that might even cover the cost of the heating. So yeah, there's a lot of great opportunities here with interplanting and you gotta get creative and see what works and what doesn't work. But one of the big things is timing. As I said, timing is one of the trickiest things with interplanting and in general with crop planting, timing is a challenge. And we're usually trying to get one crop in one bed at a time, but now we're trying to line up two crops in the same bed roughly at the same time, which can get even trickier. And as I said, that's why this makes this a little bit more challenging, a little bit more of an advanced technique. So what we got going on here, I got cucumbers and we got some lettuce. And this lettuce was actually started at the same time as that bed of green onion lettuce that I just showed you. And I split essentially my four row bed into those green onions and with these cucumbers here. So that's the plan. And so while we're in here talking about starts and seeds, I wanna talk about today's show sponsor, which is Osborne Quality Seeds. Osborne is an incredible company. I know I talk them about them a lot on the channel, but I really enjoy working with them. And in fact, these cucumbers are from Osborne. Their variety is called Katrina. It's a huge yielding cucumber that does really, really well and just puts out tons of fruit. I grew some of this last year and it was awesome. So I really recommend Osborne. They have really high quality seeds and they work with their customers to make sure that you're getting exactly what you need for your growing situation. So again, if you're looking for a seed company to check out, if you haven't already, please go check out Osborne. Links down below. And I also want to thank them for sponsoring this channel. Now that we have all that stuff sorted out here with uh, some different ideas about interplants, we're gonna get this plant out in that bed that I just showed you at the beginning of the video. Gonna interplant those cucumbers and lettuce out into this bed here. I just recently flipped this bed in preparation for planting here. And if you're curious about how I flip beds on the farm, I did a great video last year at Raleigh City Farm and the methods are pretty much the same. I'll leave a link down below. Also lately, I just been leaving links down below in the video description for videos that related to the topics I discussed in the video. So look for that down there. So let's talk about some of the tools and techniques I have for interplanting, but also just transplanting in general. One thing is a tape measure like this. I've used this so much on all the farms and everywhere. This is just a hundred footer. I use this for measuring out beds, transplanting, all that stuff. And I will use that for today too, for part of this, because I can't get everything done with this tool. If you guys aren't familiar with this, this is the Gritter. This is from Neversync Tools and not sponsored by them. This was not free from them. Uh, if you're wondering why it's red is because Gene got it powder coated because that's how he rolls. Uh, really excited about getting this implemented on the farm this year and I have quite a bit and converted a lot of my transplanting systems over to using this. So a couple of tips about it. Uh, they come in the four by three by two by et cetera. This is the four roller and it's really easy to figure out and remember because the beds are 30 inches wide. We have four, you just divide 30 by four, you get seven and a half. So there's seven and a half inches in between each transplant, four rows. If you have the three by, you take 30 inches divided by three, you get 10 inches, so they're 10 inches apart. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna roll this over the bed and this will give me my spacing for the lettuce, which is gonna go on the outside. So those will go seven and a half inches apart, like I usually transplant lettuce. And then down the middle, I'll use the tape measure and put in the cucumbers. I'm gonna put those in one foot apart.
So as you can see, I used the grater to mark out the bed and then transplanted the lettuce into the outer rows. And now we can use a tape measure in the middle to mark out where the cucumbers are gonna go. Got the tape measure all laid out and spaced the cucumbers one foot apart, just laid them in place and then I'm gonna go in and put them in the ground. Got the lettuce and the cucumbers transplanted here, watered it in, put it in the drip. Everything's looking fantastic, really happy with all this. One other point I wanna bring up about the timing, which I forgot about, you know, you wanna make sure that the plants are ready at the same time. And a good example, which I've been talking about today is that green onions lettuce combo. You wanna plant the green onions or, you know, start the trays out two weeks before the lettuce and then they'll come out kind of right when they need to be transplanted. So those are things you have to learn over time. And you know, I feel like a, such a noob when it comes to interplanting and I'm having a ton of fun with all this stuff out here and uh, experimenting and learning and all that kind of stuff. There's, I feel like I'm just scratching the surface with interplanting and as I said, I'm just learning. There's other things like relay cropping where you start planting things in uh, before other things are finished and all those kinds of things. And there's a ton of cool stuff that can be experimented with and learned. And you know, one thing I wanna point out though is don't do too much of your farm this way. If you think this is a cool idea and something that you're interested in, make sure that you're not just planting your whole farm because if you plant some, too many things in one spot, you might get no yield or you might have two field crops instead of one that works, you know, that kind of thing. So you wanna make sure you experiment with it just a little bit, start to get your feet wet with it and you know, get comfortable and learn what works in your system and with the crops that you're growing. So with that in mind, guys, hope you enjoyed this and uh, hopefully you guys consider doing some interplanting, bring out the yields on your farm, increase the diversity and uh, have fun with it. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you in the next one.